Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another live stream. I have missed my live stream. It's been a while. I missed you guys. How's everyone doing? It is a Saturday live stream. It's a beautiful Saturday here in uh, Texas, actually. We got some rain yesterday. Today, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, ran some errands and I had some free time today. Uh, and so I figured, what the hell? There, uh, There's so many samples people have sent me that I want to get through. In fact, I only picked out the samples today, um, and you can see how colorful these are, uh, from the, the brand Sense of, Sense of Wood that Rachel sent me. And Glitch actually reminded me in the comments that he sent me some uh, Sense of Wood as well. I don't, have enough, I don't have enough skin to try yours yet, Glitch. But um, yeah, there's just, I mean, there's so much fragrance out there for fragrance lovers. And I, the reason I was 10 minutes late apologies as I was actually finishing up my um, top 10 leather fragrance video that well not mine but I was finishing up Persolase's top 10 leather fragrance video that I was uh, in the middle of watching so I didn't want to stop and I'll tell you the 10 actually that he picked just uh, real quick because I always find Persolase such an interesting character number one I wish I could talk as elegantly as he does I mean um he obviously has been to elocution school and paid very close attention, uh, whereas I was probably sitting in the back throwing spitballs at people. But uh, he uh, he paid very close attention uh, to his uh, to his elocution lectures, and um, he uh, but he is so knowledgeable and he's been doing it for so long. He's been in the fragrance game for double, triple the amount of time that I've been into fragrances, maybe more, maybe four times as long. And so I always pay very close attention when, uh, when Persele speaks. And so he did a top 10 leathers and we have some crossover, obviously my taste in Persele's taste actually corresponds pretty well with each other. Um, he left out my favorite though. He left out, uh, um, he left out Bellamy and that's like, you know, I think that's almost a crime personally, but, uh, he included many of, of my favorite leathers. He included, um, what did he include? He I uh, made a note. Let's see. He included uh, Lone Star Memories. So he included Lone Star Memories, which if you follow uh, Persolase's channel, actually, Lone Star Memories is, I actually bought this uh, because of Persolase. Well, one of the reasons I bought it was because of Persolase many years ago. And uh, this ended up actually being my favorite tower. I like this better than Ledru Desert Marocaine. And that was sort of a uh, uh, Persele's recommendation, and I think he is 100% spot on. Like the way that this one sort of tells the story um, of the cowboy sitting by the campfire. I actually wrote, I, I, I wrote very few Fragrantica reviews, but I wrote a Fragrantica review on this one. And um, if you dig down deep enough, you'll probably find it. Um, it's probably still there somewhere. But um, this is, I think, Andy Tower's best work. And if you're a leather lover, Lone Star Memories is, it is, uh, it's probably backup bottle worthy even. So of course that was on the list for him. And also he included uh, Leather Oud, which if you follow his channel, um, you know that Leather Oud is uh, sort of like a favorite for him, if you will. And so Leather Oud. Now I will tell you this, I have a 2018 bottle. And this is one fragrance where I, I actually disagree with uh, a lot of people that go on there and say that the reformulation is shite because my bottle is a 2018 bottle. It's uh, 8B01 and it does have the newer sort of cap put together. And I love this stuff. Now, I haven't smelled the older stuff is, is the thing. So I'm maybe completely ignorant of how good even the older bottles are. But for me, this is... I mean, this is probably one of the best uh, privés, in in my opinion. I, I absolutely love Leather Oud. And um, he said this always gives him imagery of like mountains and uh, like big landscapes. And and um, I, I, I see what he means. You know, this is one where I would love to do a comparison video between the, the bottle he's smelling with the older juice, but uh, they're very hard to find. I'd love to find one of those older leather oud bottles for the collection that's on the that's on the wish list uh and then of course he mentioned uh caniche 10 which is 
probably one of the greatest leather fragrances of all time. You can't leave this off the list. This is another one where I am hunting a vintage Caniche 10 bottle. Um, this was um, perfumed by the great one um, in the year 1920. Five, I believe, if memory serves. Yeah, 1925. So Francois Coty and Vincent Roubaix created this hell of a lot, hell of two perfumers right there. And um, he um, he mentioned something that I had never heard anyone say before. He said that he feels like um, that he feels like Tom Ford's Tuscan leather, which was also on the list, is a continuation of Caniche 10. I don't that I don't say I've never seen that. This is so much more like a modern leather to me. And I still love Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. Um, but I don't see the connection. I would love to hear kind of a deeper thesis by good old Persolais as to how Caniche 10 turns into how Tuscan leather sort of reminds him of a modernized uh, Caniche 10. Uh, this actually, what this reminds me of, Caniche 10 it reminds me of a mod of a of a vintage version of maybe like Great Britain or even Dior's um, uh, Dior's queer queer canage. So Dior's queer canage, uh, I see much more similarities to something like uh, Caniche Ten than Tuscan leather. And he mentioned um, queer d'ange. Angel Leather by Hermes in the Hermes Ons line. I completely 100% cannot fault him for putting this on the list. Um, and uh, someone in the chat, I think it might have even been Rudy, said that he gets like a paper vibe from this. And I have to wear this again. I never thought about the paper vibe before. I said, imagine like the angel's wings are made out of wood and leather and paper. Because... Um, Angel Leather. So Quidon, he, he put on the list. And then um, he also included, of course, Quid de Russi. I should know you can't leave this off the list. This is, uh, to me, if you said this is your favorite leather of all time, there I, I would have a very hard time arguing with you because it's so Chanel. And yet there's so much of that dirty animalic side. It's like, you know, mashing the two worlds together. On the one hand, that's Chanel poshness, that's Chanel sort of um, you know, high class, upper class, bourgeoisie, you know, that hoity-toity uh, bit that Chanel just brings to the table so effortlessly, you know, it doesn't feel like they put any effort into bringing that to the table either. They don't try, they just do it. Um, but it also blends it with one some of my favorite notes, the animalic bits and the leathers. And so this is like, um, if you wanted to wear a upper class, high class leather, Quir de Russie could easily be that. It always reminds me of um, royalty riding in, uh, you know, carriages back in the day and all of the posh sort of uh, high end stuff that was around them when they were in the carriage and or they were in like a big ballroom or something. And then they come out and they get in their carriage and it's sort of surrounded by luxury. But on the outside, there are horses and men walking in the mud. And, you know, it's not like today where we have the roads and everything sanitized. That's what Puerto Rusi sort of reminds me of. And then, of course, uh, he selected Bandy, which I can't blame him one bit for. Uh, he said this was the most angry leather, and I and I sort of agree. I know what he means. Uh, what a what a creation Bandy is for for leather lovers. Um, definitely one to put on the to sniff list. And then, of course, he did include Antaeus, which uh, I'd have to unsubscribe if he didn't. Probably my favorite fragrance of all time. He mentioned something that I uh, that that I also agree with. He he mentioned how um, you know butch and and for Chanel, Antaeus is extremely butch and it can be harsh, but how it seems to know exactly how to soften down at the right times and be elegant. And I feel exactly the same way for Queer de Russi. It's just a it's just a Chanel trait, I think. And then finally, he mentioned Rien and um, Rien is sort of a play on words because on one hand, um, this feels like there's sort of everything in this bottle, all of the materials in, into one um, in, into one bottle, like uh, Antoine Lee just shoved everything together. And yet uh, the name Rien means nothing. So when people ask you, what are you wearing? Rien, you're wearing nothing, but probably everyone could smell you coming from a mile away. And he did have one honorable mention. 
which is uh, this little bad boy, which I'm not the biggest fan of, actually. He loves this stuff. This is one where we sort of disagree. This is Salvatore Ferragamo's Testa di Moro. And um, this is one I may actually sell and go for Orto Parisi's Sturkis instead. I think Sturkis is sort of a better version of Testa di Moro. But uh, but yeah, that. so I was watching that video and, and it's amazing that in all of his time as a reviewer, he didn't do a top 10 leathers. And I think leather is his favorite note, just like me. So uh, I thought that was interesting. So anyways, that's why I was late. So thanks to everyone for being here. Let's check on the comments. The whole point of these obviously is an excuse to just sort of kick the shit and talk about fragrances. So I figured, why not talk about one of my favorite topics, leathers? A ram duck double header. That's right. A double header was Rich just on. Evening from Lakeland, Florida. I missed that uh, evening, Kevin. I missed that stream, Tripler. Yeah, I uh, I got to check out some of the stuff that uh, Agar de Noir. Beautiful. That's a that's a that's a beautiful arige that does not get much love. Uh, it is so dark. Like if you spray it on your skin, you'll be able to see the outline that Agar de Noir leaves all day. It's unbelievable. How does plum in cognac compare to plum Japanese? I have no clue, Ryan. I haven't uh, I haven't worn plum Japanese enough to answer questions like that. I can tell you that I think I would probably go with plum Japanese over plum and cognac. Um, just off of sort of, you know, what I remember from plum and cognac, because to me, Plum and Cognac has uh, it was it was it was really a hype beast on on YouTube for a little while there. It it won some sort of an award, and I think it's probably the most popular fragrance from the house of Plum and Cognac. Uh, and but when I smell it, yes, it's a good fragrance. Yes, it works really well in the cold. But I get a lot of these type of uh, modern. Uh, synthetics that remind me of synthetics you might smell in Parfums de Marly or Initio or now I'm not saying this smells like a Parfum de Marly or an Initio or something like that but um, if you're somebody that's sort of sensitive to these modern synthetics uh, this may not be such a grand slam as if the YouTubers make it out to be I still like it I still wear it um, but is it my favorite from the house? No, I don't. It's not my favorite from the house. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll show you guys my favorite here in a little bit. Thanks for the picks. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope that helped, brother. Long time no see, Mike B. Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. How have you been? Good evening. Ah, uh, Fate Man. Oh, you're in Fate, GMG. Ah, uh, Fate is fantastic. It is... Um, you know what's funny about Fate is Fate, if you read the reviews on Fate, it gets absolutely butchered, annihilated online. People say it smells like a dirty Indian restaurant, that uh, the curry note is disgusting and off-putting, and yet uh, underneath that curry note that everyone is so sort of offended by and, and you know, it's it's like uh, they can't get past, some people just cannot get past that curry, that curry cumin opening it's not curry it's really cumin but um it does have probably one of the most curried um how would you say some of the most curried feel to to a fragrance that uh i've i've, I've ever smelled when it comes to cumin but that does go away uh probably within 30 minutes to, to 45 minutes and once that goes away the fragrance really starts unwinding and you can really begin to peel back the layers and this is a true proper amouage this is when Amouage was sort of in its heyday, and you know you um, you can get all of these uh, beautiful um, uh, notes that you expect from an amouage. It, it they do come through, and there's a lot to discover and learn about in Fate. I need to do a full review. I need to do a full review on so many of my favorites. He's English, yes, that's right. It just comes natural to them. Just uh, just talking like they all have a PhD. Hey, Micah, good to see you, brother. Thanks for being here, man. <laughs> Tardy tonight, no fruit cup. <laughs> Long time no see, since the day, Dolce and Gabbana by man, blind by first wear. Not sure what I think of it so far. Um, I hope you didn't pay big money for it, Mike, I'll tell you that. 
Um, by man is it's probably one of my favorite like work sense if you wanted a proper work fragrance this is fantastic stuff because it has that beautiful lavender um and believe it or not it's actually an alberto morias creation i don't know if many people know that but i think it's an alberto morias if memory serves uh but it's nutmeg leaf pepper hedione artemisia amber gaiac wood ambroxan sandalwood and leather and if you pay attention to the ambroxan like really pay attention to it this to me is maybe one of the first like vintage blue fragrances because the the ambroxan in this is huge. People real it's you get the you get the what I call the ambroxan throw that you excuse me that you get in uh, in Sauvage. I think this gives off the ambroxan throw. Um, now this is the parfum, so it doesn't do as much of an as much of the throw ambroxan as the uh, eau de toilette. Um, but this, this really does feel like a vintage blue fragrance, but it feels done with lovely ingredients from the nineties. The lavender is spot on. It's actually one of my favorite executions of lavender and that sandalwood in the base is gorgeous. It's milky, it's creamy. And when you factor those two together, beautiful professional lavender in the top sandalwood in the base, um, that's just a winning combination over and over again. So I don't think it does anything just outrageous, um, but this was, I think, a little bit of a chance. I don't know if anyone had, I can't think of a fragrance before this that has had just so much ambroxan in it. Um, and then it got discontinued. And I think a lot of people sort of went away from that until it got brought back out again with the with the blue rate, the blue uh, rage, if you will. Blue to Chanel and Sauvage and all that good stuff. But you smell, smell the, see if you can smell the Ambroxan in this and tell me if you think I'm out of my mind. Bellamy should have been in that top. Yes, that's right. In my opinion, Bellamy has to be in there. It's, a rain, it's raining over here in Lakeland. Nice. Don't you guys get rain every day though, Kevin? No fruit cup indeed. Hello, Nick. By man, it is superb. I think it's superb. Uh, I'm lucky to have a bottle. I hope you just didn't pay 500 bucks or anything crazy for it, though, um, Mike. For 100 bucks, like I paid for it, it's an absolute, it's an absolute winner for me. Hey, Ajay, what's going on? Did you get my package yet, my friend? Uh, I haven't checked. I haven't checked my PO box. I'm gonna check Monday, and fingers crossed, that'll be a hell of an unboxing for the boys and girls here. Ankara Noir and Club de Nuit Intense? My goodness. Are you uh, layering or just doing half half on one side of your body and half in the other? Do not agree about that Montal. That's right. That's the one I left out. It was the Montal. That's right. He put this in his top 10 leathers. Um, Oud Quia de Eta B, which I know he loves this stuff. And I know he, um, he meaning Persolaise. This is the one I left out when I gave you guys the 10 that that he that he chose because um, it was a 10 plus one. So the so the Testa di Morto was his plus one. And this was actually the Montal was actually in the top 10, which is insane. Uh, uh, and I, I understand it's like a personal preference for him and his bottle. He actually got it at the boutique where back in the day you could tell him to like enhance enhance the fragrance to make it stronger and they would actually add more of the perfumed oil to the bottle um i don't know if they still do that or not but um but yeah there's no way in hell i would include this and i this i've smelled i've worn it already to bed once so i'll do a um i'll do a late night insight video on montal oud Queer to add a B, you know, uh, for a Montal, if I was going to own one, it would, it would probably be this, uh, or a tar or something like that. But honestly, there's just no reason. I, I don't think there's a reason to own even one in my opinion. Um, so, but I'll, I'll do a full video on Oud queer to add a B. I can't believe he put that in his top 10. I agree on pretty much everything except for, except for this one. So yeah, that's a good shout Flippo. Ancre Noir lasting much longer. It lasts forever. Vivara is a top five for me. Vivara Tripler. What's that? 
Vivara. Ah, Vivara, yes. Uh, you mean the um, Senor Vivara. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. It is fantastic. I'm glad. Did you get that? Because I was talking about it. Did you get this? Because, uh, because of my videos. Because if you did, that makes me really happy. Really, really happy. Um, Senor Vivara by Emilio Pucci. It is unbelievably amazing under the radar um picking a top 10 leather would be really hard for me i would tell you that uh anteus would have to be in there bellamy Be uh, bellamy would have to be in there so there's two spots um queer de Russi would have to be in there there's three but after that i'm like shit i i really have to think on that I have to think on that because you're right. I mean, something like this probably should be in the top 10. It's so damn good. Oh, it's. I can't believe how under the radar this was. Cannot believe it. Um, I honestly feel like uh, I, uh, I I feel like this was like a hack, like uh, like it was just laying around waiting to be found. It's so, so good. And um, the other one that I think I would probably put in there, even though I don't have a full bottle, um, even though I don't have a full bottle, I think this for me is in the top 10. Uh, this Santa Maria Novella Po de España. Uh, I really want a vintage gold foil bottle. I want a vintage. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. It is so good. It is. It. I can't believe how good this is. And um, I, I looked at the timestamp of my video. I did this video like over six months ago. I thought I just did it. Like it felt like I just did it, but I did it like six or seven months ago now. This uh, Po de España. Um, so yes, it is. I think I would have to include that if I was being honest with myself, even though I don't have a full bottle. So what are you guys wearing? Drop your scent of the day in the comments. I wore for the very first time, if you haven't watched my video from today yet, I wore this. I don't know if you guys know what this is just from the bottle, but this is a fragrance called Untamed Oud and it's by Fong Dang. And I think that this house might be bankrupt. I'm not 100% sure. I think they, I think that uh, they might be bankrupt. And um, because they still have a website, but when you actually go to their website, you can't buy anything. Like it just talks a little bit about who she is, like she's a designer, this, that, or whatever. Um, and it talks a little bit about the perfumers. So this is actually a Bertrand Duchafour creation. So shout out to Hari for um, dropping this in my lap for a very fair price. And um, so I'm wearing it today. And I was expecting it to be really bad. Um, so I went in with very low expectations and maybe that's why I'm, I'm, I'm really liking it. Um, because I don't hate it. I don't love it, but I don't, I don't hate it. It's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. And I mean, it is a Bertrand Duchef four. He doesn't put out bad stuff. I don't feel like, but, um, but yes, Untamed Oud by Fong Dang is my scent of the day. I think this house was exclusive to Barney's maybe at one point. And then when Barney's got in trouble, maybe they got, I, I don't know how the whole thing went, but, but the sprayers on these are fantastic. They're like Roja sprayers. Like you can control the amount of juice. And um, so, yes, I have, uh, I've enjoyed wearing that today. Alan's wearing uh, Riyadh Jasmine. Never smelled that, mate. Never smelled Givenchy Noctambul either. Big Rammy in the house. Pantaccio, ah, beauty, Flippo. 11Z01. 11Z01. Uh, what is 11Z01, Christian? Curious to see how things go. This brand first came to light. For me via shill tier influencers so i'd written it off yeah i know what you mean uh i have seen a lot of that's where basically this this was hyped a lot from those as you say shill tier influencers 
they uh, they they hype this plum and cognac a lot. And uh, I will say it is not as good as the hype. It's not bad, but it's not as good as the hype. My um, favorite sense of wood fragrance is actually um, it's actually this. It is um, called Oud in Bourbon. And this is what their discovery atomizers look like. So this is Oud in Bourbon. And this is much better than Plum and Cognac to me. Um, the notes here are coffee, Divana oil, saf, Safiano Captive, Cacao Absolute, Labdanum Extract, Frangipani, Natural Oud Extract LMR. I would love to get more uh, information on what in the world Natural Oud Extract LMR is. Uh, vanilla and patchouli. And so this brand uh, definitely has a DNA. And when you smell this and you compare it to Plum and Cognac, you'll pick up some of those modern synthetics I was talking about. But I think that this is... Um, more, I think this is done better, executed better. The plum and cognac has lots of modern sweetness, which maybe that's why it was a hype beast because the masses like that sweetness. And I usually don't, I can still wear plum and cognac in the winter. Um, but this still has that sense of wood DNA. Um, but I like the way it's put together a little bit more and it focuses on that. It focuses on that oud accord which i'm sure it's just an accord i'm not sure what natural oud extract lmr is um i would love i would love a deeper explanation on exactly what type of oud they're using but it does say that organic sugar cane alcohol was used here and it was aged in a vintage bourbon barrel and pascal garin is the perfumer he's a good perfumer um so the aging and it maybe it's the aging in this vintage bourbon barrel or you know vintage oak barrel or i think each of these are sort of aged in a um you know they're like aged in a barrel of some sort maybe that's why they all have this similar smell but this is my favorite so far so we'll see if out of these five we're going to try today we find any that uh, can dethrone oud in bourbon so uh anyways and and this little set Came with a candle, which I have not burned yet. I have not burned the candle yet. So shout out to my perfume god person that sent this my way because it actually is my favorite um, sense of wood that I have tried so far. All right. So I guess we should spray one, eh? Let me catch up on the comments and then we'll spray one of these bad boys. What do you think about Queer Dodge? I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I don't get the uh, papery aspect, at least not from memory. Um, and I sprayed it pretty recently because I was talking about, um, I did a video a couple of days back on, it was um, Frederick Mall's Angelique Sous la Pluie. And Angelique Sous la Pluie had, is a Jean-Claude Elena, as is Queer Orange. And... Um, that DNA that uh, Jean that Jean Claude Elena basically um, cemented for himself with that very spicy opening that harkens all the way back to 1951 with Oda Hermes, his mentor um, Edmund Rudnitska. You smell it in Angelique Sous la Pluie, but you smell it in Queer Dange as well in the opening, and then it sort of goes in its own direction. And Angelique Sous la Pluie focuses on the on the uh, Angelica. Um, but Quirdange to me is is that very patented Jean Claude Elena opening that you get in Declaration. Um, you know, changed a little bit here and there, but he really stays true to the type of fragrance creation that he likes, and he just has his style and he sticks with it. And something that Eugene mentioned too that stuck with me. Anytime I I think about Jean Claude Elena. Um, I'm always reminded that many perfumers are forced to sort of memorize thousands and thousands of notes. Like they should be able to smell something and know exactly what synthetic that that's what they're smelling, what that synthetic is a synthetic for. So they should know that this is, you know, 
Simmerize's version of patchouli or that this is the labdanum uh, or amber extreme or whatever they're smelling, right? They're supposed to just be able to smell it and know it. Jean-Claude Elena never went down that path of trying to memorize thousands and thousands of uh, different ingredients. He just basically memorized his 300 and he said, that's all I need. And instead of going down the path of trying to learn every single one, he like tried to become an expert on these 300 notes and um, or ingredients. And what what that does is I think it sort of puts him in a position where many people say his fragrances smell the same, but it's because he's just not using the wide array of uh, notes and ingredients that other perfumers are. Um, and when I first really got into fragrance and I started to learn about the perfumers and what they did, when I came across Jean-Claude Elena's work, I, I wasn't a fan at first. Um, I thought it was way too light and airy and um, I just thought that uh, wasn't for me. You know, that type of perfumery, painting in watercolors is, is not for me. But the more that I've sort of smelled, the more that I've gotten to understand um, the past and also, you know, who Jean-Claude Elena is and his creations and spent more time with them, the more it's grown on me. That style has grown more and more and more. And, um, and yeah, I think Queer d'Ange is, uh, for me from now, I haven't smelled all of the Hermes Ange, but, uh, from what I have smelled, this is my favorite Queer d'Ange. Um, so yes, yes, indeed. Very cool spring night here in Northern California, wearing the wonderful original JHL and getting a little cherry note. Yes. You'll get this cherry and you'll get this orange note that runs straight through the middle of it. It's fantastic. I love JHL. Parfum de Marley Greenly. Ah, welcome, Scoop Jones. I've, I've actually never smelled that, believe it or not. Um, there's a lot of Parfum de Marleys that I have not smelled. Good evening, Michael. Amouage Overture. One of my faves. Yes, Fate Man. Um, Fate Man will grow on you. Do you feel Chinese oud was more barnyardy than Indian oud? Ooh. Not in the traditional sense. No. Not in the um, not in the sense of um, what you would probably think of traditional barnyard oud is, um, but there was something funky in Chinese oud, the history of Chinese oud, um, that I had a hard time sort of putting my finger on. It was it was the most unique. Uh, it had this almost fungal sort of uh animalic aspect to it that was weird and strange and i and i like that i need to revisit it it's interesting because the um the oils that adam sent me he sent me some chinese uh plantation oil which is completely different than the uh the chinese oud that was cultivated because that was a wild oud um but he actually used the chinese plantation oud to create this kinam like a chord. And um, so I don't have sort of a one for one Chinese oud. Uh, you know, I don't have an exact sort of uh, oil that I can compare it to. But I do have the Chinese oud perfume that he made from a couple years ago. And in Chinese oud, um, you can, you, you know, there's an entire perfume built around this. It's not just the oud, like in like in the Chinese oud. So you don't get as animalic a experience here. And it uh, this starts off very slow, actually. And I think that's why this never got hyped, because this is one of my favorite uh, creations from Adam that nobody really hypes or talks about. I think Chinese oud is is awesome. Um. And I think it's a I think it's a real pleasure and a joy to get to wear. So actually, after sort of spending some more time with those, Chinese oud is one of my favorites, believe it or not, with the Indian oud. But they both have animalic facets, but they're different. Are you looking forward to trying the new Elysium? Oh, intense. <laughs> Unless someone sends it to me, Ryan, I probably won't be trying it. Um, I'm not on the free bottle uh, train. You notice that all of the houses, all of the uh, channels that get their free bottles from from the brand. They all sort of um, uh, put up their videos right around the, the same couple days. So you'll see one, and then the next day you'll see another video drop. You know that the free bottles are going out. Like they all got their free bottles and they're dropping videos. So, I mean, I would smell it, but uh, am I like looking forward to it? Nah. 
You and I will both get it Monday. All right. Dior Om Sport 2007, a beauty. I have not smelled that. I bought this one. Um, I bought this Dior Om Sport. I think this is the 2000. Oh, I don't remember. Was this a 2015 or 16 or something? I can't remember exactly, but um, but I but I like this. I like this. It's good. It's um, it's uh, it's it's good for the heat. I I liked your home sport. Karine Vinchon Spanish created some of the best amouages ever. She nailed them all. I've I've reconsidered even Boundless. I I Boundless is good, but uh, that it's like uh, it's almost like a um. Amber wood note in there bothers me. It still bothers me. I, I like boundless. I like the spicy open of it, opening of it, but it's one of my least favorite from her. Patu Poron. You guys are bringing out the big guns. We just got into our raining season. The raining season starts in late May. The dry season supposedly starts October 15th. Nice. What are your thoughts on Quoium? I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. That's a great shout, Nick. That's a good leather too. Um, I haven't talked about it much on the channel because I haven't spent a lot of time with it, but uh, I really like this. I like Quoium, especially for what I paid for it. I got it for like 95 bucks or something for a full bottle, which that's basically a steal as far as I'm concerned. I really like his work. I want to, I, I really would like a bottle of Sturkis. Um, and I have some decants actually. There's a, there's a few decants that I have that I've been sort of holding off uh, on. So, for example, I've got uh, Brutus, which I haven't talked about on the channel yet. And I have Bergamusk, which I have not talked about on the channel yet. And uh, maybe even one more. Yeah, I got to do some digging. Maybe even one more. So, we'll, we'll be talking more about Orito Parisi soon. I found a Signor Vivar in Italy for peanuts. Oh, that's awesome, man. One of the best, seriously, you're wearing one of the best leathers. Easily a top 10 leather. Fantastic stuff. Uh, it's it's outrageously good. Fuck. Damn, it's good. That's awesome, dude. Makes me happy. Hey, welcome, my friend. I got DNG by man for 300. So 222. That's not that bad. I'm not sure yet, but I can't stand Savage. So I hope I don't get that out of it. But I tend to give up on fragrances. Uh, it's not like a Sauvage Ambroxan, but you will get that. You will, I think in the dry down, you'll pick up the Ambroxan more. Um, I, I've always thought of this as like an early run, um, you know, blue fragrance with really high quality sandalwood and lavender. I'd add Pomolato to my top five leathers. Got one from Keith Angrier. Nuge sent me a partial. Uh, is that this? Pomolato Womo tripler. Is it the Womo you're talking about? I need to uh I need to wear this, talk a little bit about it. Haven't got a chance to really talk about it on the channel. After Tobacco Pod. Nice. Never smelled it. Savoy Steam. Never smelled it, Micah. Tear, nice. Can't go wrong with tear. Does Rosier's Amber Oud last long enough for a bottle purchase? Um, I actually have a video on that. You can go check it out. I have a full video under my playlist if you want to kind of hear my thoughts. I I mean, I liked Amber Oud. I, I'm not buying a bottle of any of the uh, original three, either Musk Oud, which is extremely, that's the weakest of the bunch. And then Amber Oud and Oud sort of last the same amount of time to me. I don't remember how long, but I would probably guess they last eight hours. I don't think there was anything wrong with the um, projection or anything like that. I usually don't talk about projection and longevity because I reapply throughout the day. So it doesn't matter to me. Um, but I, I can't remember ever thinking that there was a problem. Although I, I was wearing it out of a little uh, decant and it, it worked fine. Bandy Supreme, never smelled that one. Hey, Rachel, thanks for being here. Yes, yeah, shocked me. I picked up a bottle of Untamed Oud six months ago. I think it's quite good. I thought it was quite good, too. I was expecting it to be very bad for some reason. I heard bad things about this brand, this Fong Dong Dang brand. I was going to say Fong Dong. Fong Dang. Um, 
I heard bad things about it, but it's not that bad. I'll uh I'll do a video on 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 this one of these days. Tuscany per Uomo. Ah, beauty. Oh, Aventus 11Z01. I should have known that. Sorry, J Rod. Uh, is that one of like the uh unicorn batches that everyone goes on and on about? I don't I think I might have smelled that. Uh, I think I might have been sent a small decant years and years ago of the 11Z01. Sounds like a batch. Yeah, it won an important award, and, and so I think he got a lot of hype, but the line is really interesting. My fave. All right, I guess I should spray one. I've been rambling for 40 minutes, and, and we haven't talked about anything. Let's start with the, uh, let's start with the uh, lightest one. Okay, I don't want to spray all the heavy ones and then do the light one. So let's start with the lightest one. Uh, and so the lightest one is Hinoki in Hinoki. And Hinoki and Hinoki came out last year in 2022. And it, uh, it was created by a perfumer named Chikai Namora, which uh, I must say I'm not familiar with uh, Chikai's work. And let's see what the brand has to say about it. I'm going to spray it on, then we'll see what the brand has to say. All right, baby. Hinoki and Hinoki. Here we go. Interesting. Hmm. That's, um... So, uh, it's almost like a... On first sniff, it's almost like a green sort of, um, it's almost like a green woody incense smelling fragrance, but a fresh incense, if that makes sense. A fresh incense, if that makes sense. It's like, um, it's sort of in the style of Arige Ladore's Mysore Incenza, but that's even better. Mysore Incenza was done uh, even better, I think, but this is not bad. This is, um, it's very green. I'm getting like this, uh, ah, they say cypress. Okay, so I'm getting like this, yeah, green cypress with, um, yeah, mystical incense. Okay, so on a bed of warm woods and mystical incense. It makes perfect sense. Damn, I gotta stop saying that. Mystical incense, perfect sense. Um, so 75 mils is $240. It says serene, sacred, and ancient. Inspired by Chikai Nomura's heritage and one of Japan's most treasured gems, this incredible creation is an expression of her favorite ingredient, Hinoki. Oh, sorry. Chikai is a her. Uh, to celebrate its sacred power, Chikai used the beauty and rich contrast of cypress with the unexpected crisp, spicy vibration of shinis mole, a eh? shinis mole, which mingles in a bed of warm woods and mystical incense. I'm not going to say it makes sense this time. Uh, let's see. Shinis mole is a quick growing evergreen tree that grows up to uh, 15 meters. It's known as the Peruvian pepper tree. Um, is this just pink pepper? Are they trying to be... Uh, are they trying to be uh, bougie about just saying this is pink pepper? I could see pink pepper, cypress, some sort of uh, woods. It's You know what it smells like to me? It smells like something that... Um, it, it smells like something that House of Matriarch would put out. If you guys know the House of Matriarch sort of woody fragrances, like if you smelled beauty wood or her incense fragrance, imagine taking beauty wood... And uh, I forgot what her incense fragrance was called. Someone will probably drop it in the chat. But imagine taking those two and kind of blending them together. I like this. This is nice. Uh, this doesn't have this. This one does not have that synthetic touch that I was saying I got in both um, uh, Oud and Cognac. Sorry, um, Oud in um, uh, what's the name of this one? Uden bourbon, sorry, Uden bourbon, uh, and also uh, plum and cognac, you know, that very modern synthetic bit, it's missing here. This is a much fresher take, the, the freshest that I've ever smelled from the brand, actually. 
I need to look up this Hinoki wood. So apparently the Shinnis Mole is pink peppercorn. So it is. It was just trying them trying to be smart asses about saying pink pepper. Warm, floral, and fruity in nature. Um yeah, so so pink pepper usually has this rosy sort of overtone. Um, you know, it uh, it it smells a little bit like the pepper itself looks. It has it doesn't smell like black pepper, but it has this sort of uh, warm, rosy type smell. And um, this is good. This is interesting. I want to see how this dries down. LMR is the name of a company like Givodon. Ah, okay, Rachel. So, but what is this? Okay, so does natural oud extract Givodon make sense though? What I don't I don't understand the uh, natural oud extract and then LMR. Yeah, I I doubt that they're using that they're using real oud here. But uh, since I don't want to get sued, I'll just say it's possible they are. But even if they are using a little bit, it certainly doesn't smell like they are. Uh, it doesn't smell like it's real oud creations. LMR is an oil house. Okay, excellent. Let me catch up on these comments. LMR is a sub company offshoot of IFF. It specializes in naturals. Okay, well, that changes things a little bit, I guess, maybe. Um, I'll have to look into this natural, uh, natural oud extract. Hi, friends. Has anyone tried Feel Oud Atars? Ah, that's high price stuff right there. Still haven't tried uh, Lodi Ver. Yeah, that's a good one. You'd like Lodi Ver. Hello, sent to the day. Pencaldi. I have a decant of that. I'm going to do a video on that soon, Man Manuel. Yeah, I feel the same about Jean Claude Elena. IFF into everything at, at company I work for. We use their flavors in some bakery items. Oh yeah, they're a uh, they they have their finger in every pie. Good evening, Joseph. Thanks for being here, my friend. I will never understand people's love of barnyard ouds. Oh, man, barnyard ouds are the best, dude. Something with that. Uh, you know, as you, I guess as you get older, you, or maybe as your nose matures, I've just learned I want animalic things. I want things that challenge, and Barnyard Oud sort of does that. I'm going to turn the light on. Not that it'll make much of a difference, but we'll see. YouTube is jam-packed with Elysium O intense videos. Yes, because everyone got their free bottles. So basically what you can do is you can take any... Fragrance reviewer that dropped an Elysium O intense video in the last two weeks and just unsubscribe. Just unsubscribe to all of them. That's an easy way to get stop watching uh, advertisements hidden as YouTube reviews. That's basically what you're doing. You're watching an advertisement hidden as a YouTube review. Uh, so, the, so obviously for a brand like Roja, it's great because for the price of a 30 or $50 bottle or however much it costs them to make it 20, 10, 15, 30, 40, 50. I have no clue how much it costs to make that bottle that they sell for 300. But um, however much it costs to make them, you know, it's, it's basically like the best free ad. You can't get that much exposure for such a little investment. So yeah, if they, if some, if a, if a channel has dropped an O in a, an Elysium O intense video in the last two weeks, just unsubscribe. You'll be doing yourself a favor. I do like some of Roja's fragrances, though. I like Roja, too, honestly. Uh, I think as far as the niche houses go, I think Roja is actually one of the better, um, you know, niche houses. But uh, when you start getting into the price tag that is asked for some of his fragrances, I, I could easily see the uh, urge to switch and, and give that money to someone like Russian Adam, for example. 2017. I just ordered Opus 9 on Rams. I saw Blind Bot Lapidus Oud Noir. I've never smelled that one, Michael. Opus 9 is an absolute beast. I um I wore it to the office 
this week. It was actually one. It was my scent of the day on Tuesday, I think, when I went to the office. Oh, my God. It is. Uh, as far as like an animalic floral goes, this stuff is fantastic. It's a Nathalie Lorson. Um, you know, this is a proper night out fragrance. It is, uh, it's, it's giant. You will get noticed wearing that, Michael. That's good stuff. You might hate it at first though. So give it a chance. Elysium was a major letdown. Can't understand the hype. It just smells like, um, it smells like uh, blue to Chanel and Aventus combined. That's all. 7, 13, 17, 22 for sport reforms. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yes. It must have, this must have been a 2017 then. I think this was a 2017. Um, I think there is a way to tell too. I just, I don't remember. And I, I got tricked a little bit because I thought, you know, it says Parfums Christian Dior on the bottom. And I was like, oh shit, Christian Dior. That must be an older one. And then I saw the red and I remember somebody saying, uh, red and here's really where the guy tricked me because he sold me a 2017 bottle with a 2013 cap. See how the C and D are separated. So when I was in the store and see how the C and D are actually together on the bottle, if it would focus, well, you get the idea. It is together. Um, and so I saw the C and the D apart on the cap, and I was like, oh, this is an older bottle. Has to be. He got me. That's how he got me. Uh, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bought it if it was a 2017. I thought I was getting the 2007 or the 2013, uh, but the cap tricked me. I need to smell that, Michael. That's on my to sniff list. Okay, so this is good. Um, this is a good start. Hinoki and Hinoki is a good start. It's not what I expected from this brand. Um, it's interesting though, because the brand itself, if you're not familiar with sort of their whole story, so it says, here's their little blurb. I'll read you the little blurb. Sense of wood is a journey into the magical mystery of forests and trees. Forests make us fall in love with nature and the universe. They are an exploration of the senses of Shinrin Yoku, our brand's Japanese name, is about captive, capturing that feeling, that pull, that attraction. It loosely translates to forest bathing, a form of walking meditation amongst trees. Lame Dubois, our brand's French name, means soul of wood, an evocation of the brand's unique creative process. The tree essences the perfumers select the barrels in which they age their organic alcohol. Sense of Wood, the brand's English name, designates the final output of this labor of love. We are a company obsessed with permanent creation. Our limited edition one-year subscriptions are a unique opportunity to discover new masterpieces of fragrances every month. Every year, subscriptions open on the day of the fall equinox. Okay, so basically their whole thing is you give them, I forgot how much it is per month, but let's say it's like 30 bucks a month or 40 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever it is. I forget what the monthly subscription is. And they send you something like this every month. Uh, so you get sort of the discovery thing. I think um, you can sort of test out the scent first and decide then if you want to go buy a big bottle on your own. Um, I'm just curious how they're coming out with new fragrances monthly. How, how is that possible? Like that is a tall order every single month. I mean, a lot of months go by and they don't stop. It's not like you can just wait and reload, you know, and, and reload. If someone is paying for a subscription, you have to send them a new fragrance every month, basically. Um, I don't, I, that's the part that made me go, mm, I don't know. Even though Plum and Cognac was hyped, even though I liked Oud and um, Bourbon, uh, I was worried about the whole, this monthly thing makes it seem like they may just start pumping out cents, you know, just pumping stuff out for the subscription. So anyways, um, I was going to look up what the hell Hinoki wood is. Hinoki wood. So Hinoki wood is one of the most elegant types of wood in Japanese, in Japan. It's uh, Japanese cypress. So this tree is a type of cypress. Um, that is considered sacred and only grows in this part of the world. Hmm. Um, how 
Hinoki has been used since ancient times in Japan as a construction material to build temples and shrines. The durability of Hinoki continues to increase for about 200 years, even after it is cut. After 200 years, Hinoki gradually returns to its original durability, which takes about a thousand years. In fact, Horyuji Temple, which is the oldest wooden structure in the world, was built using this wood about 1300 years ago and 65 Percent of it still remains today. In fact, amazingly, it is said that you can smell the scent and even reuse the 1,300-year-old Hinoki when planning. That's crazy. That is insane. Let's catch up on the comments, shall we? Roja's Amber Oud, not worth a full bottle, even if you're paying half the price. Fair. Agreed. The Pomolato is rare as duck's teeth. Is that this one? Is this the Womo you're talking about? Because there are other pomelados. I'm just wondering if you're talking about the pomelado Womo. I need to talk about. I need to talk about this. I got myself a splash, a splish. Mm, it is good. I need to wear it. I need to uh, get to know it. You didn't smell some Chinese oud you were talking about in Black Afghano. That fungal smell. You didn't smell some Chinese oud. You talking about in Black Afghano? No, man, I don't think Black Afghano is using anywhere near the type of uh, materials we were talking about with uh, something like Chinese oud. No, I don't think so. I think Black Afghano is, uh, you know, something like this where they can sell it for, you know, you can find this at discounters for 90 bucks or whatever. I don't think they're using, they're not using any, any, real oud or if they are it's the tiniest tiniest drop this is uh this is synthetically made but it's a very well synthetically made fragrance i like uh antonio uh Giar giardini giardoni i think his name is sorry if i butchered that I, I did it off the top of my head i really don't their marketing strategy the whole free bottles of youtube shells could work for new brands but well-established ones just to value their image it backfires which one are you talking about, uh, GMG Roja? Shinis Mole is pink pepper. Yes. That's we, yep. Thank you for that, Tripler. Um, uh, they're trying to sound fancy with the whole Shinis Mole. H-O-M, devotion. Yes, that's it, floral notes. Thank you, devotion. Imagine you take devotion and beauty wood and sort of combine them with a beautiful cypress note. And that's Hinoki and Hinoki. It's actually really good. I, I like this. Um, but I am, a, I am a Cypress fan. I have yet to try Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, but I really like uh, Z14. And, um, you know, there's a lot of Cypress fragrances that I've talked about over the years that I really, really like. And um, I think it's a very underutilized note. I wish more houses used that, uh, used that um, Cypress note. Pink pepper is great on grilled salmon. I love grilled salmon. I like a lot of fish. Anytime they use LMR material brand, it usually says X material LMR to indicate it's a real, real slash expensive natural. Hmm. Interesting. I just, I mean, so this, just to give you some color on the one that I was uh, talking about, this oud in bourbon, the one that says the LMR natural, you can buy oud in bourbon for... Um, where is it? Oud in bourbon. Here's Oud in bourbon candle. Uh, Oud in bourbon. Here we go. So you can buy 75 mils of Oud in bourbon for $240. You know, 75 mils for $240. If they were using a lot of natural, real, rare, expensive Oud, that thing would be way more than... $249 and is my guess. My Indonesian oud will finally arrive this week. Ah, you're going to love it. You're going to love it, Musk in Heaven. So true. Independent contractor advertising. <laughs> I'll say it again. Barnyard sweaty. The stinkier, the better. Bring on the heavenly stench. I love the stinky stuff. What happened to Styrax video? I didn't do one yet, mate, but that's a great recommendation. Thank you. I will. I'll do a this is not a top 10 Styrax. Maybe even tomorrow. Thank you for the wreck. I do try and listen to you guys. I try my best. 
I like Roja. I like them too. And just order that. Ordered which one? Which one did you just order, Yika? And Pierre Negrin, who did Black Orchid? I do like Pierre Negrin. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of Black Orchid. I do have a um, sample, though, so I'll do a video for you guys. But I'm not the biggest fan of Black Orchid. Uh, but I am a big Pierre Negrin fan. I personally un unfollow both the YouTuber and especially the brand. <laughs> I'm with you, GMG. I don't dislike Roja, but I don't feel like they are good for the price. There's better, cheaper stuff. I'm with you, man. GMG does not play around. And you know what? To his credit, he is usually right. So, I mean, when you're usually right, you can be cutthroat. Yeah, I like it, Rachel. This is good. Thank you for sharing this one. All right. We're an hour in, and I've only sprayed one, so we got to get a move on it. One of these days, I'm just going to do a live stream where we just sit around and kick the shit and talk about whatever you guys want. All right, so next is Papyrus in Acacia. Papyrus in Acacia. Discontinued. Papyrus in Acacia is discontinued and sold out on uh, the website. We have discontinued this fragrance in its 75 mil size to make space for our upcoming collection. Wow. Well, that didn't last long. It just came out. Like, literally just came out. Um, let's see. When did it come out? It came out two years ago in 2021. It was uh, a Jean-Marc Shailan creation. I wonder if that's the son of Raymond Shailan. Um, let's see here. Papyrus and acacia. Oh, that's back to the that's back to the synthetics I was mentioning in um, in uh, plum and cognac and oud and bourbon. Yeah, that's back to what I expected to smell in 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 these samples. Uh, the hinoki and hinoki kind of surprised me a little bit for how sort of fresh it is. This is exactly back to what I expected to smell. I actually still like this though. Um. But you can pick out that DNA, that synthetic DNA that sort of runs through the line. But this is good. This is, um, you know, this is uh, this this could be uh, um, this could be in in contention for one of my favorites from the brand. Um, it's just got that sweetness that the the ones that get hyped, they all have this uh, sweetness. So the reason that I like this right off of the bat is it is orris concrete. So there's a beautiful orris note in here and it smells expensive. It smells like they used high quality materials. They've mixed it with carrot and not carrot seed, which usually increases the powderiness of the orris, but literal carrot, which there's very few fragrances that have a true carrot note. One of my favorite of all time is uh, Leonard Poron from the early 80s. And this is Cipriol, which I do like Cipriol. I have an entire Cipriol video. Egyptian Cassie Absolute with Egyptian Geranium Absolute, Indian Tuberose Absolute, Java Vetiver, Star Anise, and Tonka Bean Absolute. But man, that Oris Concrete is really on display. And I think they're using sort of the earthier um darker elements of cypriol to try to um recreate this papyrus note which i wish there was just a papyrus note in here that is one thing that this fragrance is lacking um but this is good uh the 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 website says irreverent raw and dizzying pushing the boundaries this surprising clash of classics and trendy ingredients compose an elegant leathered floral scent to widen sorry to wield the narcotic floral sea of tuberose jean-marc chilan paired this iconic ingredient with the leathery woody intensity of papyrus creating a floral fragrance for men a modern twist that will hypnotize and intoxicate the senses a floral fragrance for men interesting to replicate papyrus's powerful leathery smoked effects and woody aromatic undertone Cipriol heart is used to empower this intense ingredient. There you go. My gut was correct. Also, it as it also imparts notes of leather and wood with nuances of vetiver. 
Against this ruggedness, tuberose absolute exudes a hypnotizing scent, complex with green, creamy, coconut, solar, balsamic, and animalistic facets, and slightly camphoric as well, I would say. Um, but yeah, this is uh, completely sold out on the website. Everything, even the uh, even the little discovery, the smaller little bottle is gone. So this is completely chopped. They infuse the perfumer's alcohol with wood, so it's quite unusual. Yes, um, and maybe that's why there's this sort of um, similarity that I get between them, because that is quite unique, and it really does make them stand out. It makes it makes the DNA across the, the brand um, really stand out. Too terpenic. I know what you mean. I like fragrances like that, though, that have that weird leathery. I'm good with a strange turpentine, oily, you know, I like oily resins, leathers, animalic notes. So I'm, you know, with some new ones added in from time to time, you definitely get repeats. Ah, okay. That makes more sense, Rachel. <laughs> I didn't understand then. I thought they were saying every month you get a new fragrance. So if it's repeats, I don't know about that. I wonder how many people are really paying them for the for the privilege of them sending you a decant of a fragrance you already have. Barnyard oud are an acquired taste. Yes, agreed. There's a reason why almost all luxury good brands, clothing, watches don't gift anything to anyone. The fragrance community is just an oddity. Ah, interesting. Also recently procured Zerzhov Alexandria Oriental for a very good price. Very Middle Eastern. Not as bold as I was hoping. Still very nice. I love it. It's good to hear, Michael. I'm not the biggest Zerzhov fan. Um, so I, I, will not, uh, I will not second your purchase and give you a pat on the back for that one. But if you like it, you wear whatever you love, mate. There is only one Zerzhoff that I have a full bottle of, and that's Zerzhoff Ulm. And that is a leather that actually I could have mentioned when I said Caniche 10. And, you know, uh, I mentioned that Papa Persile said he thought that this was sort of a continuation of Caniche 10. I think that it's actually something like this. Zerzhoff Ulm. Um, so, so yes, the only Zerzhoff I own right here, and it's it's in this style, to me anyways, it is. It's a smokier version of uh, Caniche 10, and uh, the only Zerzhoff I found worthwhile buying a, a full bottle of. Now, I would buy a vintage bottle of Richwood if a bottle fell in my lap at a very good price, but otherwise, I've never really come across any Zerzhoffs that I thought were worth it. The whole brand is too masculine. I know what you mean. Yeah, they're you're right. They are. They do feel like they're all masculine leaning. Um, do they? Papyrus and Acacia is so some of them are unisex. Hinoki and Hinoki is marketed towards unisex. But I do think that that cypress and, and wood and incense also gives off a masculine feel. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, the Womo. Ah, OK, Tripler. All right. Good to know. I need to talk. This is one I. This is one I bought, and then it just kind of got pushed aside, and I haven't had a chance to talk about it on the channel. So I maybe I'll wear this as my scent of the day tomorrow and try to get to know it a little bit more. Nice. It's good stuff. Glad to have that. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're using a lot of it. That's true. They're probably just using it to say they are. Ah, Opus 9. That is a absolute beast. Um... Yeah, it is. Uh, you'll, you don't don't get it on your clothes either if you don't want to. If you don't want that shirt or jacket or you know something like that or watch to be designated the Opus Nine shirt, spray that only on skin. If it touches your shirt, that's it. When you talked about Opus, yeah, Opus Nine is um, it's it's a Natalie Lorson. I mean, it's it's good stuff, and I think it could be. I think this one could be getting the axe too. It never got put in the new bottle. The new Opus bottles basically look like this. They basically look like this, where it's all uniform, which, you know, I like the bottle, but I don't like that it's all uniform. One thing I liked about these is they were all sort of, you know, different. 
and the Opus line had its own bottle. Now they all just look like this and um, they just say whatever it is right here, Opus, you know, this one's Opus 13, Silver Oud, uh, but they never put this one in this bottle, I don't think. I think it's they're just selling the old stock of this and that's it is is what it seems like to me. I could be wrong. But um, that's what it seems like to me. So, so yes, I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Yeah, I'm glad you got a bottle. Ah, Scooby Dooby, welcome, my friend. I tend to believe most brands when they list precious materials, you can put point oh 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 one and legally declare that. Even some oud aroma chemicals actually contain a drop of raw of the raw material. Yeah, yeah. I like this papyrus and acacia. Shame they discontinued this. This is good. So far, two for two. These are good. These are two two good starts. That Hinoki and Hinoki, I think, would be an easier wear for most people. But, man, I'm a sucker for Oris and Iris. I love anything with Oris and Iris. So the papyrus and acacia, I wish there were. The only thing I could say is I wish there was more of that smoky papyrus, sort of the way that... Um, sort of the way that uh, it was done in Javoy's private label. If you've ever smelled private label, that's a perfect uh, papyrus note to me. You know, it's dark and earthy and smoky and papery. And um, and that that's what's missing from this. If they had that, man, this would have everything. But uh, it is very good. Very good. Okay, let's see what we have next. Next is patchouli and rye patchouli in rye let's see where can we find patchouli in rye you know for a new house they have a lot of scents already they have a new one called vetiver and chestnut um let's see where is patchouli in rye finding them on this website is an absolute beating ah they have a leather and bourbon too i need to try that one patchouli in rye here you are, patchouli and rye. Um, so we'll go left arm. Let me make notes of these so I don't forget. So we started off with Hinoki, left wrist, and papyrus, right wrist. And then we're gonna do patchouli and rye left arm all right here we go come on baby i guess it's gonna be patchouli i guess it's gonna be patchouli so it says seductive oaked incandescent uh, a modern contrast stared by sultry woods and charred spices, the perfect signature for a seductive twist. To create this fragrance, perfumer Celine Barrel's inspiration was to play against the charred, woody inflections of rye by using earthy ingredients like patchouli and tobacco. Both luminous and dark, this fragrance breathes with seductive notes of patchouli and tobacco. Patchouli's touch of camphoraceous brightness is contrasted it with its earthy, woody character. Tobacco coils with nuances of dried fruits, vanilla, balsams, and wood. Both ingredients pair well with rye as they are both smoky and warmly spiced in nature. So the first thing that hit me when I smelled this is... Um, if you've ever smelled uh, Tom Ford's, um, oh man, what is it called? Tom Ford. Um, I'm going to have to look through the Tom Ford's to see it. I can't think of the name, but there is a, there is a note um, called Shishuan pepper. It's different from pink pepper. It actually smells like you're smelling something fiery. And they mentioned fiery earlier. Noir anthracite. If you've ever smelled noir anthracite, it has this sort of blend of Sichuan pepper um, with like dark woods, like earthy, woody, smoky woods, like uh, Macassar wood and um, 
you know, there's this green smoky galbanum in there with cedar wood and, and stuff like that. And if you've smelled noir anthracite, you'll kind of know that contrast, if you will. This uh, patchouli in rye has that contrast, but with uh, tobacco. And so it's uh, it's it's also, I mean, I like it from first sniff. From first sniff, it's good. And I'm a I'm a patchouli I'm a patchouli fan. I'm a patchouli fanboy. So I'm a I'm a patch ho. So patchouli and rye. That's good. I mean, it's not great. None of these are. Thing is, none of them are great, but it's uh, it's good. That, that kind of thing feels like fraud. Yeah, I mean, that's just the market we. I guess that's just the world we live in. They do whatever they can just to legally say, you know, on paper that it's there. That's why brands like Russian Adam and Ensar and Bortnikov are so important to to fragheads. So you think about that, like. Roja's new Taif Oud that he's charging $750 for. Um, it shows a picture of, you know, a real piece of Oud and like a Taif Rose. And how much real Taif Rose do you think is really in there? You know, it has to be less than 5% because of Ifra. But do you think it's probably more like 0.01? Or is there any real Taif Rose anyway? And all they did was use a picture, Right. Um, that's the one issue. And then you take the other side of the coin, whereas Russian Adam did Malik Al Taif, and that was 40% real, pure, royal grade, the royal grade, the most high end Taif, uh, in that that's, I want a bottle of Malik Al Taif so damn bad. Um, and just, you think about the contrast there and the differences and, and one brand is showing, you know, they take fancy pictures with all these cool ingredients in the background, but who knows how much of it really is in there? Probably not much, if any. And the other brand actually is using the real stuff, but they're not out there doing the fancy advertising. And, you know, you can't just go buy it at your local department store because it's a it's a special kind of one and done thing. And that's it. So. Ah, nice. You put some papyrus in Acacia. I like this. I really do like this. I'll, I'll um, I'll have to check that out. Glitch, thank you for that. I will. Uh, maybe I'll even do a full review. But yeah, it's good. I think the patchouli and rye is my least favorite, just because I have something that sort of does what it's trying to do. I think that the noir anthracite is actually better. Um, in my opinion, I think it's better. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. I've acquired a full bottle of Jubilation 25, and it's a tester from before reform. However, it doesn't smell like Blackberry too much, so I think it needs to sit for a bit. Huh. Interesting. I mean, there is a Blackberry. You're going to get a, a fruity Blackberry sort of um, touch. This is actually a 2009 bottle of Jubilation 25. This is a 2009 bottle. And, um, I mean, I get the... I get the, um, you know, oily frankincense with blackberry in the top. And, and I, I mean, I, I definitely get it. So, yeah, I mean, it might, it might be hard to pick out as blackberry, but just think of it like a fruitiness. The Ubar fantastic vintage obsession cologne spray. Nice. Um, uh, I'm glad you, I'm glad you found yourself a bottle of that, dude. I have been... I've been pounding the table on trying to get the one that says cologne spray on the front instead of the eau de toilette, because there is a big difference. Uh, the, the OG, the very first reform, the cologne spray of uh, Obsession for Men is out of this world. It's probably one of the best sort of animalic, musky, um, powdery, you know, fragrances that a just one of the big French house, one of the, well, not French houses, but big designer houses, American, French, whatever you want to call it. It's very hard to do musk well, you, you know, especially with white musks and all the generic stuff they're using nowadays, but man, did they knock this out of the park. It is so, so good. Shout out to Armando for finding this bottle for me. It, it is a, it, it's a blessing to have so much better than the stuff they're putting out nowadays. 
Still looking for a bottle of CL. That is the last Amouage I want as of now, but it's so hard to find one. It is. Yeah, CL is um, CL is really good. I mean, look at the dent I put in this bottle. I've used a bunch of CL, man, in my day. A um, lot of memories in this. A lot of memories in CL, man. Uh, honestly, I don't know if I probably won't buy another bottle. I'll, I'll probably just enjoy this and and move on. But before this is gone, I'll do a I'll do a video for you guys. CL man, the only Zerjoff I really like are some Ouds and Ulm Ram. You did like some Zerjoff Ouds, yes, I did. You're right, I did. I wouldn't buy them, but I did like some. Uh, it's just the 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 problem is going back to price. You know, um, it's it it all comes back to price. I just, there's no way I would ever give Zerjoff what they're asking for. Even at discounters, I, I don't think they're worth it, but that's just me. Mudasir has CL for sale. <gasps> there you go. There you go, John. Mudasir on base notes. Go, go, go. How do I get in contact with Mr. Mudasir? Just go to base notes and look him up or send me an email, John. My email is in the description of all my videos and I will send you his contact information. Yes, I like PDLN3. Actually, I like PDLN1 and 2 as well, but uh, PDLN3 is my favorite. There's a little bit of Amber Absolute in that, but with a weird sort of Rosa twist in a, in a almost like a little bit of that Jean Claude Elena Cumini opening we were talking about in Queer Orange. Imagine you took the Cumini opening and, and, you know, spicy opening in Queer Orange, or even uh, Oda Hermes from 1951, and you blended it with sort of this modern amber absolute style like roja you know fragrance and that's pdln3 to me it's it's really good though there you go probably worth it thanks for being here rachel always a pleasure Ooh, non-magnetic it's even older than mine i got the magnetic one yeah it's probably worth it that is probably worth it That's the best thing Salmon ever did. The new library collection bottles are really something else. Luxurious as fuck without being flashy and tacky. I like the new bottles. I do. Yeah, I don't like that they're all the same, but I do like the new bottle. Um, Design-wise, they... Uh, I, I like that charcoal-looking bottle. A Reuben on Rye sounds good. It does. Yeah, this is probably my least favorite of the first three we've tried patchouli and rye but it's still good that's the thing uh, i still think it's good i just you know i think i've got some stuff that does it a little bit better um let me look up the note listing patchouli in rye Okay, patchouli and rye, labdanum, Madagascan geranium, mandarin orange, nutmeg, patchouli. They say pink pepper CO2, but to me, it smells like Sichuan pepper. Um, that's where my brain went instantly is this is like a Sichuan pepper. Like if you've smelled um, the Sichuan pepper in Journeyman and you, and you sort of know how that fiery opening of Journey starts with the spices... You'll have an idea. Uh, I think this is better. Of course, this uses Cipriol and all this other stuff that I really like. And there's also tobacco in here. So I, I would say journeyman over patchouli and rye any day of the week. But um, it's actually a close comparison. Uh, this or Noir Anthracite, I think, is a decently close comparison to patchouli and rye. Uh, not bad. Just got back from sniffing some juices and picked up a backup bottle of Royal Oud for 150. It was a 100 mil tester, 90% full, so I'm super happy. What year? What year pulling the strings? What's the what's the batch code? Top three sandwich ever? Yes. Let's do a top three. Let's do it. Uh, this is not a top ten sandwich video. Big 1,000 Islands fan. Amen. Don't skimp on the pickle. So many jokes, so little time. Always time for big pickle. I'll pay more than Ramsey from all. 
you bastard, Ajay. Stop undercutting me. Besides, people aren't going to sell me Malik Al Taif because they want money. They're going to sell me Malik Al Taif because they want an important YouTuber, a stand up member of the community, Ajay, to have Malik Al Taif so I can talk about it in the video. Come on, man. Come on. How much is Ramsey willing to pay? We're not talking about price. It's not about that, John. It's about having a stand up member of the community owning. Malik Al Taif, so I can show it and talk about it and do a review on it. I already sort of have a review on it, but uh, not holding a full bottle. Salute to all. I only tried plum and cognac from this house, but I find it quite average. I agree. It actually is quite average, Vlad. Uh, not bad, but average. Uh, but so far, we've tried Hanoki and Hanoki, which I actually really like. It's a little bit like a fresh um, Cypress. Um, Imagine taking House of Matriarch Beauty Wood and, and Devotion and, and matching them together and you get this fresh woody incense. Not bad. Um, in like the Japanese style, you know, it's a little freshness. And, uh, and then we tried Papyrus and Acacia, which according to their website is discontinued. And this is uh, not bad either. I think it's by the son of uh, Raymond Shailan. I think this is uh, his son named Jean-Marc. Shailan, and this this one was uh, pretty good as well. A lot of orris, a lot of this, um, you know, floral, orris, concrete, uh, carrot, you know, a little cypriol, a little earthy cypriol to recreate that papyrus note. And then we just did patchouli and rye, which, which the chat was mentioning sounds like a sandwich, but now I'm getting a little bit more of that labdanum coming through and a little bit more of the tobacco and even this one's good. I think it's good. I'm a fan. I am a fan. Um, all three of these have been good so far. Truly amazing. Yes, you're talking about the Obsession for Men cologne spray. It really is. It's really good stuff. Silver Oud is a banger. Yes, it is. Yes, I think it's. I think uh, Silver Oud is the best thing that the Fish Man is, has put out. In my opinion, this is the best thing that the fish man has put out. Makes it makes a patchouli and absinthe. A 2012. You lucky dog. I'll still pay more. <laughs> That's it. You got to sell it, man. Something as important as Malik Al Taif, you got to sell it. The pastrami from Katz's Deli. Oh shit! You guys are going big dog on me. All right, let's catch a let's catch a train. Let's catch a train. Let's catch a plane to New York City and have some Katz Deli pastrami. That's right. That's that's exactly. I'm going for the home run, dude. Maybe he's out there. Maybe I'll run into the guy that spent 1.29 million on Spirit of Dubai Shumka or Shamukh or whatever it's called. And, uh, you know, a, a little bottle of Malik Al Taif, eh, you know, just go ahead, Ramsey. You can just have it for all your all your hard work and dedication to the YouTube community, you know. A, in Tribe Called Quest. I don't know about that one, Tripler. Full bottle of Malik Al Taif is like a mythical creature. It is. I know it is. It may or may not exist. Has Le Leon been reformulated? Was the, I haven't, uh, I can't believe that, dude. My Le Leon is like one of the most beast mode things I've ever smelled. It lasts forever. It's smoky. It's resinous. A lot of labdanum. I mean, I can smell it when I take the cap off. Literally, I can smell it from here. I can smell it. I don't have to put it to my nose. I mean, it is that strong. This thing is an absolute beast. So these people saying Le Leon is... Not so, I have no clue, but you know, uh, to be fair, my bottles were, I think, um, I think 2021 bottles, and I think that's when they were released is 2021. Let me check it. Le Leon 2020. So, yeah, um, I think these were 2021 bottles. Um, but uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine Chanel reformulating something like this this quickly. 
but I guess anything's possible. Yeah, GMG says you got one last year and it's a beast. It is a beast. I go with you to cats. That's it. We'll all go to cats. Let's take a let's take a trip to cats. All right, let me spray the next one. Ebony and oak. So ebony and oak is going on the right arm. Okay, ebony and oak, here we go. Look at that. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but like stained my arm. So dark. This is the darkest juice, I think, from this house. Ebony and oak. <sighs> Ooh, that smells like... Um, You know what this smells like off a of very first sniff, I swear to God. It's got a little bit of this in there. A little bit of ombre leather. Oh, yeah. That's got a little bit of ombre leather in there. But will you pay more than Ramsey? <laughs> 24-hour stuff, yeah. Ajay, is this... Taif the rose that is only picked by virgin maiden's hands. It is. It is only picked by. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, it is. They made sure vir virgin maidens were the only one to pick the rose petals. I'm thinking of the movie um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. When he, when he goes to the castle with all the virgins, I just imagine all of the women in the white, you know, gowns when he walks in out there just picking rose petals. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Lesson Demo Dablas? I like them. I like them. Some of, there's a couple that are, you know, decent. Like, uh, I think that the, I think my least favorite Lesson Demo Dablas I tried is the Iris one, believe it or not. And I love Iris. So Iris Pearl is not my favorite from the house. Uh, my favorite from the house is Oriental Velours, uh, followed very closely by Ombre Supreme. And, um, you know, they have a musk one that's not bad either. I forget what it was called. And they have a rose one that's not bad. Rose to Jamal. Um, they toned down the labdenum a lot. I did comparisons. Interesting. Very interesting, Vlad. So if you can get a 2020 or 2021 bottle, that's what you want, eh? Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, the labdenum on these is absolutely... I think this is the best labdenum scent I've ever tried, to be honest with you. I think it's number one. I have a sample and last forever on clothes, but didn't want to pull the trigger if it's been reformulated. Interesting. Woman's hands. Not sure about the virgin part. Well, uh, Tripler was making a funny, but uh, they should have used virgins, damn it. Guarded by the unsullied... <laughs> Oh my God. Unfortunately, it's impossible to get samples of less exclusive. I'm surprised you haven't sniffed many perfume aromas. According to your taste, you would have loved Arso Burning Cedar. Yes, but I have two bottles of um, the best burning wood scent. Filanagil, which many people say Arso smells like. So I've never smelled Arso, but. Look what I do have, thanks to a very kind, a very kind person out there. Perfumum Rola, Perfumum Romas, patchouli, that everyone goes crazy for. So I've got a sample of their patchouli. Um, so that'll make a good video one of these days. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this ebony in oak smells so much like ombre leather. It's unbelievable. Ebony in oak. So it came out in 2021. It is cacao absolute, ebony, Madagascan, geranium, pink pepper, saffron, Sri Lankan cardamom, suederol, which apparently is a... Um, 
fragrance ingredient by IFF that I'm guessing is supposed to smell like suede, uh, Tonka Bean Absolute, and Virginian Cedar. Okay, let's see what Sense of Wood says about Ebony in Oak. So a Sense of Wood subscription for the whole year is $480, by the way. So I guess you get 12 each month you get one. Ebony and Oak, here we go. Uh, rarefied, luxurious, deep. Deep, dark, and dense. The rare ebony wood is finely textured and has a luxurious multi-layered grain. When empowered, it shines with a lacord reflection. Against the elegance of ebony... The de delectable and bittersweet character of Cacao Absolute entrap entraps the wood in sweet and intriguing earthiness. So it says the sumptuous obscurity of the renowned ebony wood is modernized with an elegant addicting thread of cacao and precious spices. Yves Cesar decided to resurrect the precious ebony wood, paying homage to this rare and prized ingredient. He used its multi-layered characteristics to transform it into a gilded wood. To perceive its dark and elegant nuance, he perfectly harmonized the ingredient with bittersweet nuances, resulting in a luscious and luxurious scent. Okay, so here's the thing. Do I like this? Of course I do. It smells very, very similar to ombre leather, which I love, and I love Tuscan leather. Um, so it's hard for me to not like this, but it, I also have to take points away for creating something that smells so close to ombre leather. I know, um, maybe ebony wood, it's supposed to have its own little nuance of this sort of black, brown, hardwood. Um, but, uh, I mean... I don't know about this one. This is very, you know, for somebody who knows the fragrance world, instantly they would hit on ombre leather. So I don't know about this one. 5001 batch was the last good one before they toned it down. Mine is, uh, how do I tell? Mine's 5901. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, mine's 5901. I really like this one. Although I think my other bottle is even older than this one. So, but I couldn't tell differences between the two, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know. I I I really don't know about uh Chanel's batch codes. Hi Ashley, thanks for being here. Such a great scent. Nice. I'll do a video on I'll maybe I'll dedicate a video specifically to Perfume and Roma's patchouli. I've never smelled. I haven't even sprayed that yet, mate. Um, but I, 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 I love Javoy's patchouli. So, what are your thoughts on feeling Aguil? It's fantastic. It's, uh, I mean, it's one of the best versions of this type of scent. This sort of uh, smoky. It's like uh, imagine you're walking through a, a forest, and there's a fire in the back, in far away, right? But you can still sort of smell maybe the smoke. The smokiness is penetrating the air, but it's far. It's not right next to you. And, you know, the you're tired from walking and you can smell the crispness of the trees. It's a beautiful blue sky day. And you put your hand on like a tree to rest. And when you take your hand away, you get like that sappy resin on your hand, pine resin on your hand. Um, it's Christopher Sheldrake masterpiece. Uh, so, so, so good. I love feeling Aguil. Absolutely adore it. So glad to have a backup of it, too. For similar frags to Jubilation 25 that are spicier smelling. Oh, I don't think there's really much that smells like Jubilation 25. I mean, there are other um there are other Bertrand du Chefort scents that you could try to hunt down, but there's really nothing that smells like Jubilation 25 to me. Jubilation 25 is unique. What'd you do? Got Ombre Sultan recently. It was damn awesome. That That's great to hear. 
glad to hear it. You got my favorite Amber. Ombre Sultan is, uh, I think, a reference Amber. For me, anyways, Ombre Sultan is a, um, I think it's a reference Amber. It's like it won't uh, focus if it's not covering my face. Anyways, yeah, just fantastic. Very good stuff. John, I find Foe to Absinthe. A superb replacement. Never heard of that one, Tripler. There you go. That's why I need my lifeline. I need my Ask the Audience. I had a nearly empty sample set with Invictus Platinum, and I decided Critzia Womo, and I decanted Critzia Womo for a five mil best collaboration ever. It's like that shock aroma you can't describe. <laughs> that is insane. That is a madness. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'll have to smell Arso one day. If I'm a fashion house designer, should I call Rammer to be the model for my new fragrance line, a la Jeremy Fragrance? I will. I'll, I'll model your fragrance. Just send me some Malik Al Taif. Recommend him fragrance Dubois, New York Intense. There you go. That's a great, that's a fantastic recommendation pulling the strings. Uh, there you go. Fragrance Dubois, New York Intense. Yeah. It smells, it smells almost identical to Jubilation 25. I forgot all about that, too. I've, I've so completely put Fragrance Dubois out of my mind that uh, it's like they don't even exist. I don't, I don't like layering stuff, though, Yika. That's, uh, that's, that's a no-no for me. Yeah, layering's a no-no. I can't believe Sense of Wood put out this ebony and oak that smells almost identical to ombre leather. Um, that That's a little shocking. At least some of their other scents had their own sort of DNA. This one is, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I hate it when houses do that. I mean, you know what ombre leather is, especially if you're in the industry. Like, they knew what they were doing, creating something like this. Um yeah, and then the whole ebony thing. Yeah, not a fan of that type of, of stuff. Okay, let's try the last one. Oud in Calvados. Oud in Calvados. Hell of a name. Oud in Calvados came out last year, 2022. It's apple brandy. Oh, boy. Apple brandy. Atlas Cedar, Cacao Absolute, Italian Bergamot, May Rose, Oak Wood CO2, Oud, Pink Pepper CO2, and Virginian Cedar. It, it was done by a perfumer named Natasha Coti. I've never heard of her before. Natasha Coti, spelled different from the Coti you're probably thinking of. Um, they're doing this is, uh, I think this is supposed to be like a. Uh, by Killian's like, you know, type of fragrance with that apple brandy. Um, but I don't hate it. At least it's somewhat unique. Uh, I don't have any apple brandy fragrances in my collection. I'll tell you that. So let's see what, uh, what Oud in Calvados says. Um... Oud in Calvados. <laughs> Let's see, where are you? Oud in Oak. Oud in Calvados. Here we go. Okay. So it says resinous, bold, delectable. A celebration of the aromatic Calvados drink in, encouraged by dark, opulent oud. Perfumer Natasha Coti Mausenar wanted to capture the essence of a centuries-old distillation process resulting in Calvados and to further enrich in the full-bodied spirit with in, inflections of precious oud, a bold duo that jolts into a woody, resinous bourbon with hints of fruity undertones. So, you know, I went to a uh, distiller a uh, couple weeks back. Me and my wife went to New Orleans, and she had some friends there. She grew up there. 
and uh, one of her friends makes vodka and um, buys, you know, old uh, bourbon barrels and stuff like that to make, they, they actually, um, um, they make their own gin, they make their own vodka, but they buy their own, they buy bourbon sort of full barrels, right, from an outside source. Um, and one of the, um, one of the barrels that we opened had this sort of resin around it. And I actually took some and put it on like, a like one of the postcards that they had showing all the equipment. And I could smell that resinous, boozy, woody smell. And that's actually what this is reminding me of, but with an apple tint, that wasn't an apple brandy, um, but, but sort of with an apple tint to it. Very interesting. This is good. I don't have anything uh, in my collection with an apple brandy. This is not bad. I wouldn't buy this, but uh, this is this is fun to sniff. I, I've never sniffed any of those Killian apple brandy on the raw. I've never smelled any of those. So this is um, this is sort of a new experience for me. So um, excuse me. Okay. So yes, this is a um this is sort of a new experience for me smelling the apple brandy. I like it. It's interesting. That's an interesting sort of uh twist that that I've never really smelled before. Arso is the old pencil sharpener at the front of your classroom smell. Awesome wood scent. Nice. I'll check it out. I haven't enjoyed Uden Calvados, but it is sweet. Um, yeah, there's a little sweetness, but it's not bothering me as much as the sweetness on, say, um, something like uh, Plum and Cognac, for example. The sweetness here is is much more. At least I think it is. I enjoy drinking Calvados. Yes, that's right. Uh, what is a Calvados drink supposed to have in it? Distilled cider made from specially grown and selected apples. Interesting. I wasn't a huge fan of Killian apple brandy. It fell flat. I've never smelled it. Actually, I've never smelled most of Killian's line. Just joined the stream. What's the verdict? Another clone house. Did you review for Plum and Cognac? No, Plum and Cognac was not on this list. I'll have to do like a separate review of this one day, Mr. Inglewood. But um, the, the verdict is it's actually not bad. There were some that were clone-like, believe it or not. Um, the ebony, there's one called ebony and oak, which smells almost identical to Tom Ford's ombre leather. Um, and, but overall, I would say for the most part, I liked Udin Calvados. That's an interesting, I've never smelled any of the Killians with that apple brandy accord. So I like the whole apple brandy take on a Calvados, the drink. Um, and I liked um, patchouli and rye. Although I think it smells, I love, I love patchouli though. So it's a little bit of an easy sell for me, but I think the opening with that Sichuan pepper reminded me a little bit of sort of journeyman, um, you know, with that fiery pepper and maybe even Tom Ford's noir anthracite. And then uh, as far as papyrus, in acacia goes um this one's very interesting because it's a lot of orris and it's discontinued but uh papyrus and acacia was a lot of orris concrete and carrot and um this beautiful iris with with a what they called a masculine floral note and i i like this one as well papyrus and acacia i was a fan of and then uh the first one we tried was probably the most uh shocking because of the fact that it didn't really share a DNA with the rest of the house. Like, I feel like the others sort of, I can guess maybe they're a plum and maybe they're a sense of wood, but uh, Hinoki and Hinoki, uh, which was the very first one I tried, uh, it sort of has this fresh incense wood mixture uh, in like a Japanese style. There's this freshness to it, which, which I like. Um, so 
so yeah, so I mean, all in all, I would say, other than the weird clone of uh, Ombre Leather, which doesn't belong in this lineup at all, uh, although I like the fragrance because I like Ombre Leather, it's it's decent. I would say, I would say, Sense of Wood is decent. Is it worth two hundred and forty dollars for seventy five mil? Decent? No, none of them are. You, none of these will find full bottles in the collection. I'll tell you that. But I've enjoyed getting to know them. So. Special shout out to Rachel and Glitch for sending me some uh, sense of wood to get to know. It is fantastic, right? I love private label. Actually, um, this papyrus in acacia, I was expecting to have little touches of uh, the papyrus note from uh, private label. And it wasn't there, actually. I think that's the one thing that's maybe missing from Papyrus and Acacia is they really hit the orris note, which is a very expensive ingredient, bang on. And they also hit the uh, floral heart, bang on. A beautiful sort of, uh, as they say, masculine floral heart. Uh, but they just missed that sort of spicy papyrus, that earthy, smoky papyrus note. I wish they would have um worked on that a little bit more in papyrus and acacia but um i still really like it it's a shame it's discontinued but uh yeah you're right i mean i would just wear a private label if i want that dna common complaint i've heard from frappon is their scents don't last more than 30 minutes yeah that sucks i haven't smelled anything from the brand to be honest with you all right so we're an hour and 51 minutes in you guys probably have me for another half an hour that's usually about the time my voice starts to go out so if you have any other fragrance topics to discuss, put them in the chat. This is true, John, but it's true about their longevity. However, the quality of the booziness is top notch. Interesting. I have a 1270 decan of Gourmand that lasts as long as a citrus cologne. Ah, that sucks. I don't get ombre leather from Ebony and Oak at all. I just sprayed it to double check. Really? You don't get ombre leather from that. Oh my God, that's all I can smell? Unless Rachel mixed these up somehow. I doubt that, though. Did you send me a decant of ebony in uh, Oak Glitch? Did you send me one? I'll cross-reference it. Where is your little thing you sent me? You know, I'm asking like you know, but... Uh... Look at all these Lucky Scent samples I've got to, to go over with you guys sooner or later. There's some crazy stuff in here. Let's open this up. I'll tell you what the hell is in here. So, so some things to talk about on the channel we have not talked about yet. Slumberhouse Norn Parfum Extract. That'll be fun. And um, Slumberhouse Back or Backy. I don't know how to say that. Chapel Factory Holy Stick. I've been waiting to smell this one. Nasomato Absinthe. Been waiting to smell that one. Chapel Factory Hermit Coat. Chapel Factory Baptisma. Mona di Oreo Santal Nabate. I've got a discovery atomizer of that thanks to uh, Armando. Ex-Idolo Rider. Never smelled anything from that brand. Bortnikoff's Lucky Oud. I've been waiting to smell this one. So many I've been waiting for you guys to... Aris La Dore Plumeria de Oris. This is going to be get set aside. I don't know how that just got in there with all the others, but uh, you are being set aside, sir. Bortnikoff Triad. All right, so the Bortnikoffs and the Arige are going to get set aside. They need to go to the front of the line. How has that happened? How have you just been thrown in here with all of these? And probably the slumber houses as well. But uh, we'll come back for the slumber houses. But the Bortnikoffs and the Arige Ladores need to get put to the front of the line. And then Oud Elegance Incense. I don't know what that is. I'll have to come back to that. 
Regime de Fleurs, Rock River Melody. Never smelled it. Never even heard of it. The New Company, Forest Lungs. Never smelled anything from the New Company. Let me look up what the hell this Oud Elegance Incense is. 1270 is a joke? Really? I heard it, I heard it was like a hype beast back in the day. Oud Elegance Incense by Phoenicia? Is it Phoenicia? Interesting. Oud Elegance Incense. It must be what this is. Okay, that's cool. Hanoki and Hanoki sounds like a Japanese law firm. <laughs> when's where's when's your package from? Which package? Which package, mate? Oh shit, Poland. Oh man. I mean, we'll have to ask N Natasha. I don't think she has a friend that can work as a mule for a while. That's the problem, is she can't ship it to me. We need um we need someone that's gonna be coming to the u.s that can ship it so i'm just i'm just stuck waiting till a family member of hers or something can come and anthology de grand's crew vani de amin i've never heard of that one zerjoff 1861 naxos how did how are you still in there naxos I swear I've, I've discussed you already. Actually, you're going to get put aside. You already were discussed on the channel in the Zerzhov live stream. Why are you there, sir? Mansera's Sedrat Boise. Ha ha ha. Who can wait for that, eh? Actually, I have a full bottle now to, to, to discuss. You've been served, Amber Woods. I have only tried Frappan's Aventus clone. It literally lasts 10 minutes. Have you smelled a Alter Ore by D. Gray E? Um, so that D. Gray E guy, um, believe it or not, he reached out to me last at the end of last year or early this year and said, hey, man, I want to send you some stuff. And he did. He sent me um, this, which is called um, Jade Phoenix, and it's actually quite good, shockingly good. Um, I haven't talked about it yet, um, but one of his sense was like a finalist for the art and olfactive award. So, and I and I saw Wasps from the Lofts do a video on him. So I wanted to make sure he was legit, I guess, before I really started talking about him on the channel. So now that I know he is, I, um, and he sent me these, which, uh, let's see, we've got Dispelled, we have Charmed, we have Sugar, We have um, Sexy Skunk. Uh, we have Coffee Cat. We have REM, Rem. We have, ah, Atelier Oud. There you go. I have not smelled it yet, but here it is. And uh, Lazy Lop. So probably since I have so many to do, um, there'll probably have to be a live stream where we blind sniff just like we're doing today. We will we'll blind sniff these and we'll talk about them for a couple hours. We'll give them the due. We'll give them credit where credit's due. We'll talk about the ones that are awesome. We'll talk about the ones that are shite. And we'll just do a D gray E live stream, if you will. Um, so yes, 
Good stuff. I'm telling you, when I say I've got a ton of, when I say I have so much content to, to talk about, I, I have a lot of content to discuss with you guys. Private label is great. It's interesting that both private label and Opus 11 were born from the same kind of brief and Oud without Oud. So was Opus 6. Opus 6 was the same and Oud without Oud. I don't think private label feels like an Oud without Oud, though, to me. Parfums de Marley Pegasus Exclusif. I already did a video on you. What are you doing in there? Naughton and Wilson Gravitas. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Have not smelled that yet. Memo Lilabella. Never smelled it. Luban Idol de Luban EDP. Ah, uh, so here's what we'll do with the EDP. We will do a comparison video. We'll do the EDT versus the EDP. Huh? How's this for content? I mean, you know. And it just never ends. The samples literally never end. We have Polo Red, uh, sorry, Halloween, Halloween Man Hero. If you ever want a bashing video. No, Nobile 1942 Patchouli Nobile. Never smelled it. Amois Journeyman. What are you doing in there? We have a bottle of you already. Borneo Zen by Ensar. What are you doing in there, Borneo Zen? You get up there with your friends. We're going to push you to the front of the line. That deserves to be discussed on the channel, damn it. By Killian Valus Vu Kasher Avec Moy. I'm sure that means something dirty in French. Bortnikov Oud Cologne. You get to the front of the line, Bortnikov. You get to the front of the line. Polo Red. Here's a bashing video if I've ever seen one. Zerzhoff Richwood. I would not mind a bottle. I'll tell you that. Um, Nasomato Hindu Gross. Never smelled it. Zerzhoff Naxos again. Jesus, Naxos. Trying to sneak in, eh? Already done a video on you. Memos Russian Leather. Already did a video on you. Well, you were in a live stream, so that's 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 how that's just gonna go. I'm not doing a full video on you, Russian leather or Naxos. You don't deserve your own video. Oh, have you tried Nasomato's Baronda? I have not. I did send you ebony and oak. Shit, where's your package? I gotta find it. Um, I gotta find it, glitch. Uh, but man, I just get ebony and oak. I just get ombre leather. Like, that's all I get. Maybe she uh, put ombre leather in there by mistake. Amouage Fate Man. We already have a full bottle of you, Fate. What are you doing in there? Let's see what else is in here. Um, we've got Twisted Lily. Shit, I can't read that. Something patchouli, classic patchouli. What are you? What are you, classic patchouli? Classic patchouli. Von Userdorf from 2011. Interesting. What else do we have in here? We've got. Uh, <gasps> People's Ceylon by Ensar. What are you doing in here with all of with all of these other riffraff? Get up there with your friends. We need to put you to the front of the line. And what are your thoughts on Arige Beauty and the Beast? I love it. If I was going to buy one from that collection, I would have bought Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Jing Shen Lu by Ensar Oud. Holy shit, there's some bangers. There's some good stuff in here I want to talk about. Well, I don't know if it's good, but... It's definitely stuff I want to talk about if I can. Um, Amouage Blossom Love. Never smelled that one yet. Um, Montal's Patchouli Leaves. It's probably shite. Uh, Ensar's Namasna. 
Well, there's like there's like nothing in these though, but I'll try to get a drop out and do a video. But yeah, this is pretty bone dry. Maybe I'll get I don't even know if I'll get a drop out of this. Maybe it's just so I can smell it. I literally don't even think I can get a drop out of this one. <sighs> Smells divine from the stick. I can't do a video from the stick though. I need it on skin. That this one may be unfortunately. I'll put it up there with its friends, but that may be unfortunately just not enough. Let's see what else we got. Uh Roja Parfums Danger Parfum Cologne. Shite. Roja Parfums Scandal Parfum Cologne. Shite. Fort Bogways Lita. Probably won't like that. Not a big fan of Bagwe. And ah, Ensar's Sultan Leather Atar. That's the one. This is the one I'll probably like the best because it's very similar to uh, E01, which I was able to procure two bottles of. So you go live with your friends, Mr. Sultan Atar. All right. So we've got the Bortnikovs, the Areges, and the Ensars set aside. Set aside all the rest of you. Go back in your little bag. Ram is amber cologne worth the scratch. Yes, at least the one that I have with the uh, with the um, wood with the wood cap. Absolutely, uh, one of the best amber grist fragrances I've smelled. There's brown and uh, white amber grist in there, and it is mind blowing. In the heat, it's unreal unreal how good that is anytime you want me to butcher anytime you want me to just absolutely rip a fragrance tell me to do a review of polo red i fucking hate that stuff i despise polo red it's an arch nemesis of mine halloween man hero kind of sucks too A lot of these I've never smelled though. Gravitas I've never smelled. These these are all like little individual videos that I that I'm gonna do for you guys eventually. Slumber house bar. I feel like the slumber houses should be set aside too. They should go to the front of the line, eh? The the slumber house um, Norn. You can go up there with the Ensars and the uh, Bortnikovs in the Areges Slumber House. All right, well, we made this bag a little bit lighter. <clears throat> we made the bag a little bit lighter, but this is not where Glitch's samples were. Um... This is another live stream that's going to be happening very soon. These are um, imaginary author samples. So we've got uh, Saint Julep, uh, Falling into the Sea, Telegram, Whisper, Whispered Myths, uh, Sun, Sun Drunk. Yesterday Haze, O oh, Unknown, Slow Explosion, um, Two Slow Explosions, A City on Fire, The Cobra and the Canary, Every Storm a Serenade. I already did a, I already did a video on you, Every Storm a Serenade. That's the one imaginary author video that I actually already have on the channel. Yeah, Every Storm of Serenade is the one that I already did. And then finally, a uh, did I say A City on Fire? A City on Fire. Two A City on Fires. Um, so yes, yeah, so this will be a good live stream. This will, we could try, this will probably have to take two live streams because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, this will take two live streams. 
So imaginary authors live streams will be coming up very soon. Still have a full bottle of Norn waiting for it to turn any day. <laughs> what do you mean turn? I have the entire Nasomato mail lineup. You're in for a damn treat with Absinthe. And if you can get your hands on Hindu Grass, I they that was in there. It was part of the Mr. Yes, sir, Mr. Inglewood, because they can't get the oils for that anymore. Okay, well, that's a treat then. I'm I'm a lucky ram. I am a lucky ram, Mr. Inglewood. Will you ever get tired of Ood? No. I don't think it's like a fad. I think it's here to stay forever. Alter Ood. Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, Alter Alter Ood by D. Gray. Yeah, we'll do a D. Gray E live stream. So, so here, we just set up our next couple live streams. D. Gray E and uh, Imaginary Authors. Since you're an Ood expert, I'm not an Ood expert. I want to know your thoughts on Montal Ood Mazing. I want to know if I should feel guilty about it. Yes, I haven't smelled it. Yes, you should feel guilty about it. Just throw it away. <laughs> How is Alter Ood in your humble opinion? Vintage bangers that were flops in their days. That's most of them, I feel like. I swear. Ego East. Yeah, Ego East was a huge flop. Valuse Bel Vuz. Think of the Lady Marmalade. <laughs> and just like that, my comment about Hindu grass hit just before you pull it out of the sample. It's fate. That's it. It was meant to be. I have so many videos to do. It's unbelievable. Ah, news. What's going on, brother? Uh, I was really hoping for a Toronto Maple Leafs Dallas Stars Stanley Cup final. Um, but unfortunately, your Maple Leafs just shit the bed. So, yeah, the Stars kind of shit the bed yesterday, too. But that's only one game. We're going to make it up tomorrow. Now you got to cheer for the, for the Stars. I was cheering for the Maple Leafs when they were playing. It just wasn't working. Do you like good life, Anuj? Anuj! Lily, the little sis. Eh, it is kind of mad, isn't it? Cool bottle. I was thinking since I can't get Malik Al Taif as well, try Beauty and the Beast unless you think something else in the same vein. Beauty and the Beast is actually um, the fragrance with the most real oud used in the base he's ever done. He said it was something like 30% oud in the base, something outrageous like that. Like no one uses those amounts of oud. So what happens with Beauty and the Beast is it opens up literally like a like a beauty fragrance. There's a lot of uh, lemony rose. It smells like Taif rose and Indian rose in rose sort of blended together. And it's beautiful when it opens. But as the hours tick by, once you get to like hour three and four, the beast comes out. That oud comes out. The dry down. Um, it's, un, it's unreal. It's really good. I would not mind a bottle. I just didn't want to pay 400 bucks for it. Ego East, Balenciaga, Photo, Moschino, everything flopped. Ah, nice. And Tyrannosaurus Rex is my favorite from that perfumer. So that's interesting. Actually, decent sellers, to be honest, for their pricing, marketing, availability. I'm curious on why they failed, as in Balenciaga, Poor Ohm. Probably most frags that were after their time. Metallica, I love Metallica. I have a treat for you guys, too, coming soon. It's not here yet, but it's coming. Uh, speaking of Metallica, daddy found himself a bottle. So out of fashion. So many factors, some just can't be explained as to why. Retrospect is a game everyone tries to explain to no avail. That's right. Carlos Pals, aka Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, sold me a bottle of City on Fire, but I didn't want to smell like a fireman, so I got rid of it. <laughs> Thanks for the replies. Love this channel's crew. Yeah, man. We're the real we're the real fragrance lovers here. A lot of those were my samples, but the bigger samples are in a small manila envelope has paper. That's right. No, but I put them aside. I just don't remember where I put them. I gotta find them. Um, um what did I do with it? I must have just set it aside somewhere. I'm probably looking right at it. I just can't see it. I just have so many damn samples to go through, glitch. I just have so many damn samples to go through. We also have, um, ah, I think these are them. I think these are them, Glitch. 
This looks familiar. This looks familiar. I think these are yours. I could be wrong, but I think they are. Um, and you made a key. What did I do with the key? It's in it's in my drawer, I think. You made a key. I have to find it. I will find it. I will find it, Glitch. Don't worry. Your fragrances will be discussed. Um, another live stream topic, by the way, that I've just been waiting on, just back, just need to find the time to do the damn live stream, is I've got three gear lawns. And uh, actually, sorry, I've got four gear lawns. And I've got um, three Celines that I've been waiting to smell for a live stream. So three Celines and um, four Guerlons. So this will make a hell of a live stream one day. Iris Tereffi, Bois de Armini, which I still have not smelled. Neroli Atre Noir and Queer Beluga. I've never smelled any of those. And Saint Germain de Prez. For Celine, uh, Eau de Californie, and Le Po Nui. So, live stream topics continue. I mean, uh, I wish I could do this as a full time job and just do this every single day. We could knock these out. You know, it's funny because even if we knocked out like eight in a day or seven in a day, like we did today with the uh, Sense of Wood, we did five. Uh, I, it's still just barely making a dent in the amount of fucking samples I want to talk about with you guys. So it's just never ending. Uh, ooh, Amber Cologne. Yeah. Not so absinthe is good. Haven't smelled it yet. Happy Saturday Night Live chat. Welcome, Phyllis. Good to have you. I like Alter Oud. To me, it's very calming and meditative. I have only worn it twice, though. Did you buy it on your own? Would you say the beast in beauty and the beast is skanky since it seems like we are opposites in taste there? Yes. When it comes out, there is a little bit of skanky barnyard, but it's unbelievable. How are you getting on with Ford and Manley's? Anyone, any more thoughts on them? I actually did the live stream on them and then I never, never pursued any full bottles or anything, or I just did. I didn't think they were worth going for personally. I mean, I almost went for that Bosnikov's purple hat or whatever it was on, on, there was one on Mercari. I think you pointed out floral notes, but someone beat me to it. And I didn't want, I didn't want to spend, I didn't know if it was worth it to spend the money on it. But if a bottle, if a vintage bottle like that falls in my lap at a good price, I would, I would go for it. Time to start selling stuff back to a new <laughs> Those are the ones. That's it. One of my top bedtime scents. That's good stuff, Tripler. Yeah, is um, how similar is uh, Bois d'Armini to Bois d'Argent? Same perfumer, right? With Bois d'Argent and Bois d'Armini, both Anique Minardo. This stuff's pretty relaxing in and of itself as well. It's just impossible, Ram. Every 10 samples you blind sniff, you get 20 more. I know. It truly is. Uh, but just think about how much content the channel will have for people that actually give a shit. Not, uh, you know, not like uh, Fragcom in shock, but uh, real fragrance content. That's what I'm excited about. That the content isn't like... Uh, YouTuber blast Mr. Ramsey. No, I mean, we're, we're doing hopefully what you guys would consider legitimate uh, content, not Jerry Springer or, um, you know, we're not doing Mari. Although Jerry Springer did just pass away. R.I.P. Jerry, Jerry. But yeah, we're not doing that here. 
yeah, I bought it on my own. It was nominated for Autumnal Faction. I like to try those. I bought a blind bottle blind sold out now. Nice. It's good stuff. Different, darker, more vanilla. I like your long vanilla. That's right. What the JRE? JRE. That's what some of those YouTube channels are, you know? They're they're like they're like uh they're like, uh, who are the other ones? There was Mari Povich and uh, Ricky Lake. Uh, was it Ricky Lake? It's Ricky something. Um, yeah, that's what they remind me of. They're just pure entertainment channels. They're, the, you know, very rarely do they even talk about fragrance anymore. I probably talked about more fragrances than uh, in, in the last couple hours than they talked about in the last couple years. So... Thank you, Michael. That is very, very kind. Um, someone asked me recently who I thought the best YouTuber was. And I think they were wanting me to say like Sebastian or and I was like, I think I'm the best YouTuber, actually. Not not that I have that big of a head, but I do think that uh, between folks like Jonathan and me and um, Rich Mitch and, you know, there's very few people out there, I think, that are just doing it for the love of the game, for the love of the fragrance they want. So many people nowadays are doing it for something. Like, I feel like they want the notoriety. They want the super chats. They want the money. They want the uh, subscribers. They want the views. They want the accolades or whatever it is. And uh, the fragrance becomes secondary to them. Um, and so, so yes. Ah, uh, Jesse Raphael. Wow. Sally J. I haven't heard that name in years. Jenny Jones, man, no one did it like Jerry, though. Jerry would just let people go on there and legally beat beat their ass. Stoked how endless the content that it is. It is endless. It's true. That is one thing about this. And, and even if I never received one more sample, like nothing from this moment on, I still have to basically review every single one of these bottles. I haven't done full reviews on any of these. Like I've done a comparison video here and there. Um, and I've done like, I've done a full review of Creed's Acer Aluminum, which I have a full bottle of. Uh, that was one of my older, one of my very first reviews. But I, uh, I, I did a full review of Metallica. Um, but there are very few. I did a full review of uh, this little bad boy, which I've come to love actually. Believe it or not, um, I did a full review of Roja's $3,500 a bottle shit, but Roja's um, Hout Lux, as they call it, or it's actually just called Roja, but it's in the Hout Lux collection with the ooh, gold flakes. Um, I did a full review of this, and I think I did it justice, but I've come to love it even more since that review. Oh, it's so damn good. Um, and, but there's very few fragrances that I've actually done full reviews on. So what that means is, is that every single fragrance that you're basically looking at here, I don't have a full review on any of these, almost none of them. I mean, I could just grab one at random, uh, Rogue's Bon Monsieur, fantastic Fougere. Haven't done a video on it yet. So I have like literally an endless, it's it's endless, the content. I'm doing it to get days. <laughs> Rest in peace, Maury Povich. I always get anxious contemplating the burden of the choices you have to make on your son. Oh, I try to be scientific with it. So one day I'll let myself like pick one of my favorites, you know, like one of my all time favorites. Like I'll wear Queer de Russi, right? Like I'm going to wear one of my all time favorites. And then the next day I'll wear something new. And then the next day I'll wear like a niche scent. And then the next day I'll wear a vintage scent. And then the next day I'll go back to one of my all time favorites. So I try to be like somewhat scientific with it because if I'm not, I feel like there, it could be five years and I won't wear one of the fragrances one time um, just because of how big my collection is. And then if you get around to, if you get around to trying to wear like 
everything once before you wear the same thing again, then there'll be like two years between getting to wear some of your favorites. And then you're wearing all this other stuff you don't really love. So I figured out I have to work in wearing my favorites. I just, it's the only way that it makes me happy. I mean, I honestly haven't had much problem with eBay, John, to be honest with you. Um, but no, I don't, I don't start with trusted sellers or I just sort of look for what I, you know, there's uh, eBay has a hell of a buyer protection guarantee. Like if you buy something and it's fake, they'll, they'll have your back. That's it. Jerry, Jerry Springer. Now Mercari does not have your back. So be careful with Mercari. They're little shit houses. Um, but eBay does. <laughs> pick one and only one frag to wear every day for one year Antaeus or Bellamy uh, or it could even be fucking Jubilation 25 or it could be um, fuck one one fragrance every day for a year I mean it could be uh, it could be this Senor Vivada, I love this stuff. Seriously, this is really underrated. Um, I'm glad, Tripler, you found a bottle for peanuts because this is this is going to be worth big money in the future, I'm telling you. Senor Vivada is fucking fantastic. That leather, that animalic note is stunning. Yes. Yeah, the one on Mercari. Yeah, you and me both, Lily. You and me both. Um... Shit, if I if I catch one like that again, I'll split it with you. All right, well, this is about the time my voice goes out, so I guess we should probably call it, huh? Hell of a stream, though. I enjoyed getting to know the sense of wood. Uh, it's always good chatting with you guys, and uh, hopefully we can do this more than once a week, but uh, worst case scenario, it'll be once a week. That's it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a it's you're you're your spot on GMG 100%. 100%. And like I always say, if you want to know the future, you have to know the past. Like that's 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 what it is to me. So um Yeah. Yeah, it depends on um I'm worried about the newer roses to be honest with you, AJ. Uh but yeah, it's a good deal, 40 50% off. That's good. All right, guys. Pleasure as always. Cheers. Everyone lick the stream before you leave. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do your do your due diligence and do your licking. And uh, do you have scents that have given you great dreams? Holy shit. That's a hell of a question, talk radio. I don't know. I gotta, uh, I gotta sleep on that one. Um, literally, no, I don't know. That's, I don't think I've ever associated a dream with a scent before. Maybe that's a chat for next time. So, all right, now, cheers. Catch you later, guys. Bye bye. Thank you to the chat.